Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage. Kathy Lewis, Elliot Lewis, two of the most distinguished names in radio, appearing each week in their own theater, starring in a repertory of transcribed stories of their own and your choosing. Radio's foremost players in radio's foremost play. Ladies and gentlemen, Elliot Lewis. Good evening. May I present my wife, Kathy? Good evening. And may I present Jerry Hausner? Good evening. Jerry is up here in front with us because the story we're going to do for you tonight is really about three people, and Elliot and I thought it would be rude not to have you meet Jerry before it all started. Because the story is told by a man named George, and that's the part Jerry plays. It's a lovely story. It was written by Shelby Gordon, who did the adaptation of The Lady or the Tiger we did last month. This one is called The Man of Independent Mind, and it's about... Well, that's why Jerry Hausner is here to tell you what it's about. First, Fred Steiner and The Overture. <laughs> What's the use of kidding? I don't care how close you are to a guy. You're his friend, you're his buddy. But do you ever get to know what he's like inside? Now you take me and my partner, Wally Craig. Pal! But did I know what was biting him? Nah. Of course, what happened to him, it was his own fault. He brought it on himself. But when you get right down to it, what was his trouble? He figured out one day he's a human being, that's all. But believe me, it's enough to get you right up to your ears in hot water. The way it all started, we were out on this job one day, tapering Mrs. Connolly's dining room. Roses. All the time, roses. You ever see anything like it, George? What'd you say, Wally? You'd think Mrs. Connolly would want something besides roses in her dining room. Some wallpaper. You don't like roses? Sure, roses. Who doesn't? Well, so what's wrong with the wallpaper? You call these roses? Well, sure. When'd you ever see a rose as big as that? Well, I guess they don't grow that big. There you are. But otherwise, it looks like a rose. That's not what a rose looks like. The color's all wrong. And look at the leaves. Well, Wally, it's only wallpaper. What do you want? It should smell like a rose. It's just a picture. A picture of a rose should look like a rose. Look, for 60 cents a roll, you don't get, uh, what's his name, Rembrandt. George, if you can't make roses look like roses, why do it at all? Why make wallpaper look like this? Because people like it. Now, George, what kind of people like wallpaper like this? Mrs. Connolly likes it. Mrs. Connolly doesn't like it. She bought it, didn't she? Sure she bought it. It's in the sample book, so she bought it. Well, she could have taken something else. Like what? Petunias? Begonias? Gladiolas? Well, you don't like them neither? Not on wallpaper. Flowers that don't look like flowers. Birds that don't look like birds. Trouble is, the average man's got no choice. You buy these lousy patterns in the sample book, or you don't get wallpaper. Well, I never heard no complaints. Who complains? The average guy never opens his mouth. About what? about getting pushed around? Well, no one gets pushed around without he opens his mouth. That's how much you know. You take the man on the street. What street? George, don't you ever read the newspapers? The man on the street, John Q. Public, the crowd, a whole crowd of average guys. They're always getting pushed around. That's why they're average guys. Ah, go on. I'm telling you, take a look around. Listen, I wouldn't recognize the average guy if he walked in here right now and started drawing mustaches on the wallpaper. Yeah, I guess you wouldn't. That's because you're an average guy yourself. Me? Well, look at the rut you're in. You never do anything out of the ordinary. Who don't? You don't. You're an average guy. Oh, and I suppose you're not. Of course not. Okay, big shot. What did you ever do that was so sensational? Now, George, don't get mad. I'm just saying I'm not like the rest of the crowd. Uh, don't give me that. You're no better than anyone else. That's how much you know. Well, you ain't so much. Hand me a fresh roll. Big shot. A lot you ever did. I still don't think it looks bad. I'm telling you, Clara, the nerve of the guy. Oh, stop grousing, honey. George is your best friend. Nice friend. Wally, you know there isn't anything he wouldn't do for you. Then how come he gets so critical all of a sudden? You're just exaggerating. He wasn't criticizing you. What do you call it? Clara, I got some pride. Well, it wasn't so terrible. How can you say that? My best friend, for no reason at all. He tells me if I should drop dead this minute, nobody knows the difference. Oh, he didn't mean anything by it. No. Well, he didn't. In any way, he's right. Clara, what are you saying? Now, wait a minute. Don't get sensitive. Me? 
sensitive just because my own wife tells me to drop dead? Oh, Wally, I didn't mean it that way. How many ways are there? Would you like me to drop frontwards or backwards? Now, Wally, stop it. My own wife. Now, listen. You're making a mountain out of a molehill. I don't want you to drop dead. Even just George. Of course we'd miss you. Thanks a lot. You've got a lot of friends. They'd miss you, too. I'm sure it'd make a difference to them if anything happened to you. Yeah, they'd have to cut out the Saturday night beer to buy me flowers. Well, honestly, you're just impossible. Look, all George meant, all I'm trying to say is that, heaven forbid, if you should die, the world would go on, and hardly anyone would know you'd ever been alive. Clara. Honey, honestly, I love you, and, and George and all your friends think the world of you, but... but but people like us, we live our lives and no one ever knows the difference. It isn't like you're president or, or you'd invented something. Well, I never had a chance. I was always too busy making a living. All right. So it's nothing to be ashamed of. A lot of people are too busy making a living. It's a tough life. A lot of people never, well, I don't know what you call it, they, they never make anything of themselves. But they're happy. Just average guys. What's the difference? But that's terrible. Well, they don't think it is, Wally. They grow up, they get married, they have kids, they grow old, they, they never do anything that sets them apart from the rest of the world, but they enjoy life. That's all the time. Clara, is that all we are? Is that all we've got to look forward to? Oh, my goodness, it isn't so bad. Wally, it never bothered you before. I didn't know. I always thought I was different. I never thought... Clara, is that all I am? Just an average guy? Is that all? Of course not. To me, you're something special. You're the best. To you. Isn't that enough, Wally? But I want to do something with my life. Clara, I want to be something. Not just for myself, but for you, too. Well, I'm not complaining. But to go through life. And then just like that, you're out of it and nobody remembers you. That's no good. But it's like that for everybody. For most of us, anyway. I don't want to be like that. I want to make a mark in the world. I want the world to take notice of me. Clara, I don't want to be just an average man. But, honey, there's nothing wrong with it. I never really saw myself before. I'm a failure. No, Wally. We're all failures. It's terrible, Clara, to be just average. To be a failure. That's terrible. got to do something. The big jerk ain't been on the job in three days. Well, what can I do? He just sits around, mopes all day long. Oh, gee, I'm sorry. I kind of feel like it's my fault, sort of. I can't blame you, George. I wish I knew what to do. He's so miserable. Ugh, big lunkhead. He's got no right making you miserable, too. No, I don't mind that. I'm just worried about him. Big jerk. So am I. Maybe if you talk to him, Do huh? you think I'd better? Come on, huh? He's out and back. All right. He's been out there all day, just sitting. He wouldn't even eat. Oh, gee. He ought to eat. Hi, Wally. Hello, George. How is, uh, everything? All right. Uh, Wally, when are you coming back to work? I don't know, George. I hadn't thought about it. Could you come back tomorrow, maybe? We got that big papering job on Oak Street. Seven rooms. I can't do it myself. You can do it. I don't know, Wally. It's a two-day job for both of us. Do it yourself and take four days. I'd better turn it over to another firm. Wally, you really ought to help. Go on, back to work. Clara, he can do it himself, and he can make twice the money. But he says he can't. Yeah, that's right, Wally. There's no such thing as can't. You can do anything you want to. If you didn't like the job, why didn't you say so right in the beginning? Well, how'd I know you were going to walk out on me? You're just using me for an excuse. An excuse for what? You don't want the job. Why don't you admit it? Well, how do you like that? Listen, there are a lot of jobs I don't like, but I don't turn any of them down, and I don't walk out on them. But I can't work alone. Ah. You're just using me for an excuse. What's your excuse, Wally? Me? Why'd you walk out on it? Clara, I didn't... Well, it isn't the same thing. It's worse. You walked out on your job, on, on, on your friends. You're, you're even walking out on your own life. What are you talking about? Sitting around here torturing yourself, and for what? Oh, let him alone, Clara. No, I won't. I'm sore. He decides one day he's a failure, so he just quits cold. Well, what do you want me to do? Get back in the same old rut? I don't care what you do as long as you stop feeling sorry for yourself. If you don't like wallpapering, go out and do something else. 
Take up a new trade. Be a doctor. Sell papers. I don't care. Don't you think it's a little late for that? Is it? Well, I can't start all over, can I? Why not? I can't. That's all. A minute ago, you told George there's no such word. You said he could do anything he wants to do. Why don't you? What? She's right, Wally. By golly, she's right. Oh, Wally, don't you see? You're not doing yourself any good this way. I don't care what you do, honey, but do something. Yeah. Gee, yeah. I can still be somebody. Sure. Now you talk. I'll show them who's a failure. I'll show them there never was a man like Wally Craig. Clara? Yes, Wally. Let's eat. <laughs> I thought that was the end of the trouble, but I guess I should have known better. Wally came back to work all right, and everything was swell for a couple of weeks. He was his old, cheerful self, and he didn't talk anymore about being a failure or setting the world on fire. And then, one day, we're doing a job at the old Palmer place. Real slick job, too. Embossed paper. Even Wally likes it. Isn't this paste a little thick? Yeah, it could be. I'll thin it out. No, that's all right. I'll do it. Ah, oh, gee. You know, I like working with you, Wally. I, I'm awful glad you came back. Are you glad, Wall? Oh, sure. But just till I find myself. Yeah, I, I sure hate to bust up the partnership. You gonna get a job or something? I might. Kind of depends. What are you cooking up? I'd rather not tell you, George. Not right now. Why not? Wouldn't want it to get around yet. Well, I ain't gonna tell anyone. Well... No, I'm better not. Ah, oh, come on, Wall. Well... Okay. George, I finally figured out what my trouble was. No kidding. You see, George, I'm potentially a great man. Oh, now, Wally. Now, wait. I'm not being conceited. Every one of us is potentially a great man. You too. Me? Ah, you're just saying That's that. That's the truth. But, George, we made a mistake. Eh? Huh? We let ourselves become average guys. Now, don't start that now, again. Now, listen. We don't have to be average guys. Uh, we can do anything we want to do, be anything we want to be. Only trouble is we never tried to do anything important. From now on, things are different. I'm going to make something of myself. Oh, gee, that's swell. What? George, I'm going to be the world's strongest man. Come again? The strongest man in the world. You? Me. Well? What do you think, George? Wally, you're nuts. Suppose you don't think I can do it. Well, listen, George, remember that story we saw in the paper once about the farmer who lifted a cow every day from the first day was born? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he kept on lifting it every day. That's right. And finally, he could pick it up even when it was a full-grown cow. Yeah, I remember. Well, there you are. Where are you going to get a cow? I don't want to pick up a cow. It's just the principle of the thing I'm interested in. There was another story, George, about a fellow who took poison. He took small doses at first, and then he gradually increased the amount until he could swallow a whole barrel full, practically. Oh, he must have been a real oddball. No, he wasn't. It worked. Anything works, George, as long as you start out easy and work yourself along in easy stages. Well, you ain't going to take poison, are you? Of course not. But look. Watch this. That's a toothpick. See? Oh, Wally... A two-year-old kid can break a toothpick. Sure, but now look. Two toothpicks. You get it? Uh-uh. You're not paying attention. Look, anyone can break a toothpick, and if you can break one, you can break two. Is that right? Well, that ain't hard to figure. If you break two, you can break three. I'll go along with that. If you can break nine, you can break ten. If you can break fifty, it isn't any harder to break fifty-one. You see? And that's all there is to it? George... I'm going to keep adding toothpicks until one of these days I can break golf clubs and baseball bats in my bare hands. I'm going to keep on till I can break trees and telephone poles. And one of these days, George, you know the courthouse oak? Sure, the oak in front of the courthouse. One of these days, I'm going to break that big old oak tree in two with my bare hands. You're kidding. Wally, the courthouse oak? That's the biggest tree in town. It's, it's three feet thick. Who cares? George, I'm going to be the strongest man in the world. You are listening to Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage. Tonight's play... 
the man of independent mind. When you take a trip, take your radio, too. Going to the beach, picnicking, hiking, mountain climbing, radio can take the trip, too. Highways and byways are all airways, thanks to radio. And any radio you carry carries the summertime easy listening favorite America listens to most. Presented day and night, every day and every night by CBS Radio. And any radio you carry carries the summertime easy listening favorite America listens to most. Presented day and night, every day and every night by CBS Radio. Going somewhere? Take radio, too. <laughs> heart set on doing something to make him different from other people. He was going to be the strongest man in the world. So he went around breaking things. Toothpicks, pencils, golf clubs, working his way up to the courthouse oak. Well, I'm telling you, he was driving us nuts. Uh, me and Clara, that is. You see, something happened that kind of worried us about Wally. His plan was working. Of course, it's only a baseball bat, but you see how easy it is, Clara? Wally, you better stop this right away. I don't like it. Why not? Why, the way you broke it in two, like... Uh, like it was just another toothpick. It isn't normal. You bet it isn't. And this is just the beginning. You wait, Clara. I'm going to be famous. <laughs> He got famous, all right. That's what scared us. For instance, that same day, one of his neighbors came over to see him. Big guy named Al Cook. Wally and Clara were out and back, and Wally was still practicing. Hey, I uh, sure hate to bother you folks. That's all right, Mr. Cook. Sure? What's on your mind? Well, you'll probably think I'm crazy for repeating this, but uh, my kid came home today and said you broke a baseball bat in your bare hand. Of course, you know how kids are always making things up. Oh, he didn't make it up. Hmm? I was showing some of the kids how strong I am. Thought it might inspire them. You should have seen their eyes pop out. They didn't think I could do it. Well, frankly, neither did I. Well, take a look. I was just showing my wife this morning. He can do it, all right. Well, it's a broken bat, but uh, you did that? Sure. Want to see me break one of the pieces? Well, I, I wouldn't want to put you to any trouble. Oh, that's no trouble. Well, I'll be. Sorry! Hey, what's the big idea? Why'd you hit him? That'll teach him to break my kid's ball bat. Well, that didn't discourage Wally. He kept his mouth shut after that, but he went right on breaking things. He graduated to two by four, then to four by four, and small trees. And finally, he could actually take a pretty good size tree and snap it. Just like that. You never saw anything like it. I never saw anything like it. Wally, you can't keep dumping lumber in the yard. It just looks terrible. Clara, i got to keep in training. Well, can't you do it someplace else? Darn it, there isn't even room around and move anymore. All these broken boards and trees, it's just silly. Clara. Wally, how long is this going to go on? Well, I break the courthouse oak, I guess. Then what? You can't make a career out of it? Well, I'd have to think about it. I might get some offers when the newspapers start writing me oh, up. Wally, I don't want the papers to write about you like you're, you're some kind of freak. Freak? I'm the strongest man in the world. Oh, I just think you're being silly. Well... That's all the help I get from my own wife. Wally, I'll give you all the help you want, but I don't know what you're trying to do. I'm just trying to... I know. Uh, the strongest man in the world. What do you expect to gain by it? You're going to go around breaking things all your life? Don't make it sound so terrible. Well, you're just making such a fool of yourself. No, I'm not, life. Clara. You'll change your mind when you see how everybody will look up to me. You'll see, Clara. You'll be proud of me. Oh. That's all he wanted, a little respect from his neighbors, and something for Clara to be proud of. Well, the time finally came when Wally was ready to let the world know about himself. He called all the papers in town, and he told them to come over to the house. I guess we were both a little disappointed when only one of them sent a reporter, Jack Jensen of the Herald. So you're the strongest man in the world. Yep, you ought to see him. That's why I'm here. Just what do you do, Mr. Craig? He breaks things. That's very naughty of you, Mr. Craig. What? 
Just how did this amazing strength of yours all come about? Well, it all started with toothpaste. My, you are strong. You don't believe me. I can be convinced. How about a demonstration? Sure. That's why I called you. All right. I weigh about 170. Let's see you lift me with one hand. You don't understand, Mr. Jensen. I don't lift things. I break them. Is that all you do? Oh, he really does, Mr. Jensen. The other day he broke a telephone pole in his bare hand. Why, Mr. Craig, you big bully. All right, you don't believe I can do it, but I'll show you. Listen, Craig, are you on the level? Sure. Well, maybe I'm crazy. Okay, let's see you break something. Anything in particular? You pick it out. I don't want you to think I'm faking it. All right. How about that apple tree out front? Sure thing. You're really going to break it, huh? Easy. Well, this I'd like to see. Oh, he'll do it all right. Well, I'm in this far. Might as well invest some film. Let me get a picture of this. Anytime you're ready. Wally? Yeah. What are you doing? Uh, this is a reporter from the Herald, Clara. He wants a picture of me breaking the tree. Is this your wife? Huh? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. The apple tree? Uh-huh. You let this tree alone. Clara. Don't you dare. But this is for the newspaper. I don't care who it's for. You leave it alone. Clara, stop shaking your finger at me. Hold it. I... Nothing to be afraid of, Mrs. Craig. Just a flashbulb. You took our picture? Yeah. Thanks a lot, strong man. <laughs> Look at that, will you? Oh, stop, Wally. Look at that picture. Did you have to shake your finger under my nose? I'm sorry. Fine story they printed about me. Strong man, wilt before little woman. Great, just great. Well, I don't like it any more than you do. But the whole town's laughing at me. Oh, well, let them laugh. What difference does it Clarity, make? Clara, do we have to go through that again? Why do you think I'm doing all this? I want people to respect me. Well, if you want me to respect you, you leave that apple tree alone. I wonder if I'm ready yet. Ready? For what? I wonder if I could tackle the courthouse oak. Oh, I'll Wally. show that reporter. I'll show them all. Oh. Why, God. What are you going to do now? You'll see. You'll just see. Hello. Mr. Jensen, please. Now, Wally, be careful. He'll print another story about That's you. That's just what I want him to do. Hello, Mr. Jensen. This is Wally Craig. I just thought you'd like to know, at exactly noon tomorrow... I'm going to break the courthouse oak in two. I hope you'll be there. And don't forget your camera. Gee, what a mob. I didn't think there'd be so many people. I'm glad Clara stayed home. Now, you sure you want to go ahead, Wally? Sure. All right, all right. Hey, Craig. Hey, there's that newspaper guy, Wally. Yes, come on. Up after all. What do you mean after all? I told you I'd be here. Yeah, I know. You want to make a speech to your public, uh, or isn't that part of your technique? You still think I'm a phony, don't you? Well, you just get your camera ready and take your last look at this oak tree. Help yourself. Yep. Well, here goes. Good luck, Wally. Thank you, George. All right, Craig, that's enough. What? Get away from the tree. Yeah, who said so? I say so. Lieutenant Brent, police, you're under arrest. You're arresting me for what? Listen, crackpot, we got enough troubles without you starting a riot on the courthouse lawn. I didn't do anything. You read the paper this morning? Well, sure. So did everyone else in town. You want to see what kind of lunatic thinks he can crack this oak tree. You might get sorts if you can't deliver. But I can. Oh, now listen. Just give me a chance. Come on, Craig. Hey, Lieutenant. Yeah, Jensen. Uh, just for the record, what's the charge? Disturbing the peace, inciting to riot, public nuisance, you take your choice. Well, how about attempted destruction of city property? It's a serious thing to go around breaking oak trees in two. Or a jerk. They really hurt Wally, the lieutenant and the reporter. He felt terrible that he never got to try that oak tree. I guess it hurt him even worse when the judge dismissed the case against him, too. You see, the trouble was, no one took him seriously. They sort of patted him on the head and told him to be a good little boy. No jail, no fine. Just go on home and be a good little boy. Well, that hurt. Wally. I'm all right, Clara. I just like to be alone for a little while. Honey, it doesn't mean anything. I made such a fool of myself. Oh, it isn't that bad. I wanted everybody to respect me. That's all I wanted, Clara. 
But I made a fool of myself. Honey. I wanted to be something special, not just average. You know what I am, Claire? I'm not average. I'm less than average. If it helps any, I love you, Wally. I still think there's nobody like you. They're all laughing at me. I failed. But there's nothing wrong with failing. It's easy to laugh at failure. It's hard to try. You tried. Me and Henry Ford. Only he made the grade. <sighs> Hello, George. Hi, Clara. Uh, this is uh, Lieutenant Brent. Hello, Miss Craig. Can I see your husband? Come in. Hello, Craig. What do you want? I just stopped by to see if you and your partner could find time to do a decorating job for me. It's six rooms, Wally. We could start tomorrow and wind it up in two days. You want us to work on your house? Sure. Why? Well, the wife's been after me to do it. It's been about five years since we had it fixed up. Why me? You said I was a crackpot. So? Will you trust me to decorate your house? Listen, I don't care what you do on your own time. I'm just interested in getting my house fixed up. And you two guys are the best paper hangers in town. We were recommended to them, Wally. We were? Well, who? All the other decorators. They all say you're the best in town. They said that? Well, not just you, Wally. Me, too. Gee. Hey, did you hear that, Clara? The best in town. Us. We got a deal? You got a deal. Uh, the wife will pick out the wallpaper. You bring over some of your nice stuff. You bet. See you tomorrow. You bet. Hey. How about that, Clara? I heard what he said. Yeah. The best paper hanger in town. of Independent Mind, starring Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage. In a moment, Mr. and Mrs. Lewis will tell you about next week's play. Dreams are the stuff of which there's music in the air is made. Tomorrow night, Alfredo Antonini and the orchestra, your baritone host, Earl Wrightson, soprano Francis Greer, and tenor Clark Dennis get together for When I Grow Too Old to Dream, I Dream of Jeannie, I'll See You in My Dreams, and many other positively dreamy tunes. Tomorrow night on most of these same CBS radio stations. And now once again, Kathy and Elliot Lewis. We're very grateful to Shelby Gordon for a delightful story, The Man of Independent Mind. And deep thanks to Jerry Hausner, who, as George, told it to you. Other average human beings tonight were Frank Nelson, who hit me, Byron Kane, whose newspaper ridiculed me, and Barney Phillips, who arrested me. All average men and happy with it. Next week, Shirley Gordon, not related to Shelby, has a new story for us. It's about love, and that's always pleasant to hear about. More specifically, it's about a girl who wasn't in love and never had been until... And that until is the story. It's called Miracle for Julie. Until next week, thank you for listening. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Tonight's story was composed and conducted by Fred Steiner. The Kathy and Elliot theme is by Ray Noble, and the program is transcribed and directed by Mr. Lewis. George Wall speaking. And remember, the world dances to Lud Gluskin's music Friday evenings on the CBS Radio Network.